everybody and welcome back to the United Stand. This is Eric Ten Hag's pre-press conference ahead of the game against Liverpool. I mean, we say this every single time. It's an absolutely massive game. Is it massive in terms of can Manchester United achieve Champions League football this season? In my opinion, no. Eric Ten Hag has his say in this press conference. But it's massive because it's Liverpool and it looks like they're heading towards winning the league and Manchester United can stop that from happening. And Eric Ten Hag has to bounce back. His job is on the line. Not only are we going to get into Eric Ten Hag's press conference, it's quite a short one because it's obviously filmed after the Chelsea game yesterday. We're going to talk about a report coming from The Athletic that Ineos and Sergin Ratcliffe are still behind Eric Ten Hag and are planning a future with Eric Ten Hag, the role that Eric Ten Hag wants to take on and the other options if we want the manager to go. Because honestly, I'm going to have my say. I watched Mark's morning show. He had his say and he's very adamant that he doesn't want Southgate. He feels like Southgate will be the next manager if Ten Hag goes. But he talks about the issues being there with Ten Hag. And to be honest, I want to get off my chest how I'm feeling. I've been Eric Ten Hag in this whole time. But the same things keep occurring that it's frustrating and it makes me question where we are heading towards in the future. I still think Eric Ten Hag should be given time under the new structure. But there's a lot of things wrong currently. And there are a lot of red flags popping up with Eric Ten Hag that... Because I like him, I keep ignoring them. But I want to have an open conversation with you guys. Get in the chat what you think as well. But first thing first, let's get into the press conference. And the first question he gets asked is about Rashford and Gary Neville. So, a lot of people talking negatively about Rashford again after last night's performance. The fact of the matter is, I don't care if somebody clips me up and says, you know, why are you, why are you saying something bad about Rashford? I shouldn't have to say this, but it's true. I have loved Rashford ever since he came through at Manchester United. I saw something on my on my on my memories the other day. You know when your camera all pops up on your memories. When I was in like college and it was like your favourite footballer, Rashford was literally the answer that I put down. Like Rashford, I've loved him for years. But the fact of the matter is, is he the reason we lost the game? No, I don't want to repeat what Goldbridge said. But the amount of effort that he's putting in, I can view it with my eyes. It's not good enough. It is not good enough. And not only is he now coming on not even in his favourite position on the left, he's coming up up front and Mount's coming on the left and he's doing a very good job. Ganacho scored two goals from the left-hand side and did a very good job. I mean, where is Rashford going to fit? You know, if Ganacho is playing very well from that left-hand side, if Mount's coming on and doing very well, in my opinion, where is Rashford going to fit? I mean, that's a question that needs to be asked as well. Rashford on form, Rashford at his best starts on the left-hand side because we know how talented he is. But the unfortunate thing is, not only is he out of form, which I think fans can accept, but it's the effort levels that fans can't accept. And he, Ten Hag gets asked about Gary Neville's comments on Rashford and Ten Hag says, I don't know what Gary Neville was saying. I think lately his form is progressing and he has a big motivation because he wants to be successful with us. He wants to win trophies and score goals and contribute. We have a chance in the FA Cup to fight for the champ and to fight for a Champions League spot. The Euros are also coming up and I'm... Sh and I would say his motivation should be high. The form, this is a, it, this, that is at the moment, but we can always change the momentum. And lately, before Brentford, he scored three goals in three games. So Eric Ten Hag still backing Rashford, which he's obviously going to do because he wants the best out of Marcus Rashford. And he feels like the way he can get the best out of him is trying to big him up in the press conference. But what I would say is Eric Ten Hag is absolutely right in the fact that Rashford's motivation should be high. According to reports, his Euro's place could be under threat. And to be honest, based on his form this season, he probably doesn't deserve to be in the squad. Let's be honest. When when you look at the, the, the wingers that are performing, Cole Palmer, Jared Bowen, I think Jack Grealish is the top player. I mean, Saka, there's Phil Foden sometimes, uh, most of the, the majority of the time, plays on the wing for England. You know, his England threat's under place, and you'd, you'd think at least, you know, you'd get a bit out of him for that. Also, you know, he's come out and said how much no one should question his motivation for Manchester United. And I like all that, but show us on the pitch. And that's, that's, the on, that's the only thing we're not seeing. Like, I'm watching the game, and I'm watching Rashford jog. I'm watching him come on the pitch for 20 minutes, and players who have played 90 minutes week in, week out, like Bruno Fernandes, is still running 10 times more than him. I'm seeing Hoyland come off and suddenly De Sassi and Badashiel are stepping out into the midfield because they're not getting pressed and they're not being pressured. 
And it's that's what I'm seeing. And, and it's unfortunate because Ten Hag does say there, you know, Rashford, he has the talent. We know that. We know he's got the talent. We know how good Rashford can be. Like, everybody knows that. He did score three goals in three games. And he has got that in his locker. But his motivation should be high. You know, Man United was still on course to potentially get a Champions League spot. That is gone. I'm sorry. That is gone. So that's kind of been put on the back burner. But show some pride. Do you know what I mean? And Rashford's not the only one. There's other players as well. I think that what it is with fans is we see Rashford as one of our own because he is a fan himself. That's where the expectation becomes even higher on him. And obviously the Euros place, you would expect him to be fighting for that. And the FA Cup, that is the only saving grace to our season that's still there. So hopefully against Coventry, we don't slip up and we can see players put in multiple good performances. But the one thing that I can say is Anthony, Ganacho and Hoyland should be the front three going into the Liverpool game. It should be. Anthony had a great performance. Ganacho had a great performance and Rasmus is the best striker we have. That should be the front three. So where does Rashford fit in? I think Rashford will come back in. But get in the comments what you would do. Um, Henrique Solomon says, Rashford is not consistent, unfortunately, like Martial. And Mark says, never ending chances. Uh, Ahmad off the bench instead of Rashford, says Mazanda. Um, what do you guys think? Who sh who would be your starting front three for Manchester United going into Liverpool? But Ten Hag also got asked about dropping points in the press conference, and he basically just basically just says that this week in stoppage time we dropped five points, and it's very expensive. Points are getting more expensive as the games are running out, and we know that we have to catch up, and we are many points behind. It will be difficult, but we will keep fighting, and I'm sure that you can see our team has character. You've seen today they were resilient and I'm sure that we will see that on Sunday as we fight against Liverpool on that one the fact that we've dropped five points in stoppage time is ridiculous I mean I've spoke about that on the forum I spoke about that on the five things we learned this morning it's ridiculous I don't want to cover old ground but Ten Hag's right the team have showed character we've come back and we have faced a lot of adversity this season when we've come back in games the issue is we have a huge amount of naivety and we switch off and the mentality to see out a game is just not there we are not getting champions league we are not and ten Hag gets asked about it and he says you know the points are very expensive we're far behind we're not getting champions league i'm worried about us dropping out of out of europe altogether to be honest with you because this team is capable of scoring goals against the best teams this team is capable of winning games but unfortunately, too many times this season, we've seen unsustainable football. We're conceding more shots in 2024 than Sheffield United, who were the, one of the worst teams I've ever seen in the league. The football just isn't sustainable and we were not, we're not going to be able to catch Villa and Spurs. At the end of the day, Villa and Spurs are both better than us and that's, that's where we're at. That is where we're at. We're not getting Champions League and I think Ten Hag knows that but he's obviously not going to give it up now in the in the press conference when he gets asked about it and he said if he got asked if Manchester United need a perfect run now to get into the Champions League and he said yes but that is also what they said before this match again it's just not going to happen and then Ten Hag gets asked about the setbacks Liverpool we gained momentum in the FA Cup but that momentum is completely gone after the international break with a draw against Brentford which felt like a loss and then a loss against Chelsea and he said for me personally I have to manage the team and the game we have qualities and great players we can play to very high standards and we have seen that today versus Chelsea and against Liverpool we can compete with the best and beat the best teams in the Premier League and when you do that you can do it across Europe so Ten Hag what he's basically trying to say and he speaks about this in in his next answer as well is he thinks this team can beat anybody but He's spoken about how they have to learn how to win games. They have to learn how to see out games. And he said himself, there's too many team errors and there's too many individual errors. He's absolutely right. But ultimately, Ten Hag has been way too positive and complimentary about the football that Man United have played this season. We can win games and we can beat the best. We've seen it before. But we don't do it in a fashion that is sustainable. We don't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with teams. That game against Chelsea was a mid-table basketball clash. 
Like, let's not pretend Chelsea are uh, Man City or Arsenal. Chelsea were twelfth in the table going into that game, like, and they and they were probably the better team. We we absolutely went toe to toe with them, and we had some great moments. But they gave us a way back into that game by Casado passing it to Garnacho. Like we don't play sustainable enough football. We concede way too many shots. We concede way too many chances, and we get hurt. We get hurt, and we will get hurt from that. You can blame the referee. You know, you can you can blame individual errors. You can blame players switching off. All of these things are true. But the fact of the matter is. Manchester United have won 12 games this season, I think that's the correct figure, by just one goal. Every game is tight. Every game we just managed to get it over the line. We never dominate teams. Our style of football, if you can even call it a style of football, currently in its form is just not sustainable. And we will continue losing games because sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. And our luck's run out a little bit recently. That's that's what that's what I think anyway. Get in the super chats. What you think? I am going to. I'm going to put a poll in the chat of would you start Rashford against Liverpool and see what you guys think. So we'll get that poll going as well. And then uh, the last question that Ten Hag gets asked is he gets asked about recovering and going on to the Liverpool game, and he just says that we have to deal with the loss against Chelsea. We have to recover quickly and turn this around. So from Friday, we will be in a positive mood. We will look forward and take energy and you can take a lot of energy from being mad and angry and we have to do that. He also speaks about um, fans being on being on the side as well and how we have to be loud in that Liverpool game. And honestly, I'm dreading the Liverpool game. I'm dreading the Liverpool game. Liverpool will have a chance to seek revenge on us after what we did to them in the FA Cup. They are going for the title. They have massive momentum behind them. You know, they could have easily let that Sheffield United game slip yesterday, but they come through it. How many times this season have you seen Liverpool and you think, oh, they could they could lose this game and out of nothing, they just win it out of nowhere? They have got the mentality. They have got that. And they're going for the title. Klopp hasn't beat Ten Hag at Old Trafford. We've beat him twice now at Old Trafford. I just... The, the media can smell blood. I feel like... The players can smell blood. It's, I hope to God I'm wrong, but I see us capitulating again on Sunday. I just I just do, based on what I've seen this season. I hope I'm wrong. Get in the chat what you're thinking about that as well. So, yeah, that is Eric Ten Hag's press conference. What The one thing I would highlight from that press conference, which I think is something that is absolutely right, and Ten Hag also you know, needs to take some responsibility for, is he says, we need to learn how to win games. Tonight versus Chelsea and Saturday was an example of how you bring games over the line and get the three points. So we have to step up and make better de decisions individually and as a team. That's been happening all season. How have you not been able to get a grip on that? How have we not been able to change that? Like I said, we've got three draws in the league. I think now, how many losses is it in the league for Manchester United? Is it 13? Um, let me just quickly look that up, actually. 12 losses in the Premier League for Manchester United and three draws. That shows how poor we are at holding on to, to points. And this has been happening in the Premier League, but it's also been happening in the Champions League as well. And this is an issue that Manchester United have. We cannot see out games. We are way too open. But Ten Hag himself doesn't know when to shut up shop. So I think Ten Hag needs to take responsibility. But of course, the players need to take responsibility as well. Would you start Rashford versus Liverpool? Get your comments in the chat. I'm going to say no, because I think Garnacho and Anthony played very well. They were two shining lights that came out of that game. And they both deserve to retain their starting spot. And Hoyland obviously is going to start down the middle. But that's a press conference spoken about. I wanted to speak about that with you guys because obviously everyone's always intrigued to hear what Eric Ten Hag has to say but for me at the moment it's just it's just white noise because we can talk the talk we can't walk the walk and every game it's just the same things over and over again and nothing seems to be improving and it's it's, it's frustrating it's frustrating you know we can say all these things before the Liverpool game but I think I know what's coming on Sunday I'll be very surprised if it's not I'll be very happy if it's not but 
it's not even as if we're chasing Champions League any, anymore anyway, to be honest. It's not really as if there's much on the line anyway, because I think we're way out of that competition. I'm sorry to be negative. I'm usually really positive, but honestly, that Cole Palmer goal completely knocked the wind out of my sails. But I want to talk about some news coming out about Everton Hag's future as the manager what Ineos should do, what Sergio Ratcliffe's going to do, and a very interesting report coming out from Laurie Whitwell. And it starts off, this report, by Ineos would like to stick with Eric Ten Hag and would like to stay, and he would also like to stay at Manchester United. There has been a good sense of collaboration and discussions between Eric Ten Hag, Sir Dave Brailsford and Sir Jim Ratcliffe recently. So, Miguel Delaney came out with a report saying that it's more and more likely that Ineos are going to get rid of Eric Ten Hag. So these are just complete conflicting reports here. I trust Laurie Whitlow's reporting and I think The Athletic are very reliable. But to be honest, I would be very, 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 very surprised if Eric Ten Hag makes it past this season. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be really honest. Despite what anyone thinks about keeping him or getting rid of him, the fact of the matter is the amount of losses we've had this season is inexcusable. And I just don't see it getting better. I think the Liverpool game are going to get beat and I think the pressure massively rises and then we know what this team can do. It can just go into complete capitulation. This season has been an absolute write-off. I can't wait for it to end. I'll be very surprised if Ten Hag is still here. I want him to be still here. And the reason I want him to still be here is because the big rumour is is that the man to replace him at the top of that shortlist would be Gareth Southgate. And I can tell you categorically that I would do anything to keep Eric Ten Hag over the, bringing Gareth Southgate in despite how poor Ten Hag has been this season. But he's also dealt with a lot. We're going to dive into it in a second. Um, another bit from the report is several figures around Manchester United feel Eric Ten Hag deserves the chance to operate in a new structure populated by people whom Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Sir Dave Brailsford regard as best in class. Performances and results this campaign have raised scrutiny on Ten Hag, but United's consistently long injury list is viewed as internally as a genuine mitigation so I'm going to have my say on this I know Mark's very kind of extreme in terms of defending Eric Ten Hag and I'm going to be honest here this is what I'm thinking I was driving to the studio today and I was thinking what am I going to say on the show because I don't even know myself what I want right now there's several things that are frustrating me with Eric Ten Hag. But there's also a few things I really like with Eric Ten Hag and why I would want to keep him in a job. So this is where I'm at. Eric Ten Hag has dealt with over 50 injuries and illnesses this season. We have not had a stable backline whatsoever. I think there's multiple players in that team that are declining. And I also think a lot of responsibility for a lot of individual mistakes this season have to go on the players. What I also think is he's dealt with a takeover midway through a season. He's date with, dealt with the Jaden Sancho situation. He's dealt with the Anthony situation that was earlier on in the season. He's dealt with a lot of stuff. But on the other hand, there is no excuse for the amount of shots we are conceding. There is no excuse for the unsustainable football that we see week in, week out. There is no excuse for the poor in-game management that I've seen multiple times this season. He never subs certain players. He doesn't give certain players enough of a chance. Ahmad is one that I think deserves way more opportunity and I question Eric Ten Hag's thinking on that because He's a good player. Why isn't he getting more opportunity? Mount's another one. I'm sorry. He had a great cameo again coming off the bench at Chelsea. He is a player that actually wants to play football and actually can keep the ball. And he's very good on the ball and doesn't treat it like a hot potato. He needs to find a place for him in the starting eleven. Being too stubborn at times, it's frustrating. Not switching Dallow and Wambasaki yesterday was a huge, huge mistake. Persisting with Rashford at times this season... I love Bruno Fernandes and I think he should start 
every game for Manchester United. Honestly, I do. But he should definitely be substituted more often. Ten Hag doesn't do it. There's multiple things for and against Derek Ten Hag that I can name here, right here, right now. The way that our press hasn't improved whatsoever. The way that we consistently get cut through in the midfield. The way that he started Scott McTominay and Bruno in the midfield together consistently for multiple games in a row. Like These are things that I look at and I think, this, this isn't sustainable for you to continue as manager because there's so many things I disagree with. There's so many things I disagree with. But on the other hand, he's dealt with so much. I actually do think he's a good coach. I think we've gone on this cycle of new managers time and time again. I said this, when people were talking about sacking him before Christmas. There's a, there's a clip that went, went quite big of, of me speaking about this. How many times are we going to go on this new manager merry-go-round? And the fact of the matter is, and people will, people will call me out for this, but I don't have another manager in me. I don't want to start the cycle again. Maybe it's blind faith. Maybe, maybe it's persistence because I don't want to start again. But I don't want to start again. Eric Ten Hag, it's had peaks and troughs, and right now we're going through a real low point. But he has started a process. He has started that process. If we get a new manager in, we start again right from the beginning. And that might not work out as well. There's no guarantees. With Eric Ten Hag, he overperformed in his first season. He's underperforming currently. But the one thing that I do like about Ten Hag as well is the culture and the standards and the mentality that he sets. He contradicts that by playing players that won't run. Although he did drop Rashford yesterday, so you know maybe that's a starting point. But Jaden Sancho, bad attitude, didn't tolerate it. He won't tolerate players not having the correct attitude to play for Manchester United. That's that's one thing that I like about him. On the other hand, I say, well, he's. He's had, he's had favourites this season and he's not given players chances when they should have done. So that kind of contradicts that point. Also, in terms of recruitment, let's be honest, it's not been good. His recruitment hasn't been good. I think Anana actually is a good signing and people will ridicule me for that, but I think he is. I think Hoyland is a great signing and I think Mount could be a good signing. Lissandro Martinez, I absolutely love him, but he's just suffered with injuries. We've only seen him really for one season. Casemiro is on his last legs and I'm sorry, can't be starting for Manchester United next season. I mean, Tyrone Molassio, we've not seen him in a year. Eriksson was good for half a season last year until he got injured and then we've not really been able to get anything out of him. He was on a free transfer, to be fair. Anthony, everyone would say, he's, everyone would have said it was, it, it was a bad signing. To be fair to him, he had a very good game yesterday and I, I still have hope that maybe he can turn it around, but overall his signings have been really, really poor. There's so many things for and against Derek Ten Hag, and I'm going to be honest, I just really kind of like him. I like him. I like him. I've sat in press conferences, I like the way he conducts himself, and I like him as a person, and I like him as a manager. But there is a lot of things wrong, and I'm not one of them people that won't, won't, give Eric Ten Hag any accountability. He picks the team, he picks he picks what substitutes to make, and at the end of the day, he's the manager of Manchester United. He has to take some accountability. Yes, these players are not good enough. We know that. Yes, Sergio and Ineos have to make tough calls in the summer. They have to. And I'll be watching that with a very close eye on a lot of these players. And of course, the board and the structure above Eric Ten Hag needs a massive change. And that is beginning. Got some news on John Murto coming in as well that I'll bring to you. But right here, right now, if you say to me, Beth, Eric Ten Hag's going to go. Southgate's going to come in. I would say no, 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 no. No. I would at least give Eric Ten Hag now one transfer window under the new structure because Eric Ten Hag isn't even going to be picking the signings from now on. It seems like I'm going to get into that news in a second. Give him one transfer window. Give him next season. Let him see out his contract and let's see what he can do. Let's not cut the process short. And right now, I understand 
there's a struggle to see where this process begins to pick up and where it's going to in terms of winning games and playing good football. It's hard to see that. But let's at least give him a chance to get rid of a lot of players that are not good enough and hopefully give him a chance under the new structure to bring in some players in the summer that are. And let's see what we can do when hopefully after the pre-season, the injury situation we've managed to sort out, the medical department is 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 improved because that needs to be looked at as well. And we go into a fresh start next season and let's give him one last crack of the whip. That's where I'm at. I wouldn't sack Ten Hag because I know that the alternative is probably Southgate. I don't know it for a fact, but this is what I keep getting told. I keep getting told that Southgate is probably going to be employed if Eric Ten Hag leaves. And the reason being is Nagelsmann, if Ten Hag left, by the way, Nagelsmann would be my first choice. Nagelsmann is at the Euros with Germany. Ineos don't know much about him. They'd have to interview him. Where's the time to interview him? Roberto De Zerbi, he's got a 15 million release clause. I think it is. We're not paying that. We're just not. Gareth Southgate knows the Ineos team. He's very close with Dan Ashworth. He's, they've worked together before. Apparently, they have a great relationship. He has a relationship with Sir Dave Brailsford. He would just come straight in. They wouldn't have to pay much for him. That is where we're at. That is where we're at. Give Eric Ten Hag one last crack of the whip because I'm at a point where I've put up with it for this long. Let's just see what he can do next season with a proper structure behind him. How much of a shame would it be if we sacked him now, right? He went on to a bigger club. Not a bigger club because there isn't a bigger club. He went, on, he went on to a big club and did really, really well. And we said, oh God, could you imagine if, if we just give him, if we just give him that, 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 that chance under the new structure, the best in class structure, because guess what? The worst thing to do is not know what could have been. Okay, if we give Eric Ten Hag the new structure and we give him a chance and it doesn't work out, we can say, you know what? We tried it. We tried everything we could with Ten Hag and it just wasn't meant to be. He wasn't the right guy for us. But if we let him go now, and we don't give him that chance under the new structure and he goes on and he does well elsewhere, everyone will say, oh, we shouldn't have made that decision. We should have at least given him a chance. We should have stuck with it. We should have stuck through that tough period. So that's, that's the situation we're in right now. And I've just seen the ferocious say, no top team will touch Eric Ten Hag. Well, in this Laurie Whitlow report, apparently multiple clubs across Europe feel like Ten Hag overperformed last season has underperformed last season and that kind of gives him a solid time as Manchester United manager so far. And let's not forget, you know, we've been to Wembley back-to-back -back seasons. We could be in another FA Cup final. You have to look at the football and the football is not sustainable. It's not good enough. But there has been a lot of mitigate, mitigating cir circumstances as well. Going to get some super chats in here as well that you have brought in. Um, Double J, welcome to the United States Members Club. Pizza says... Dallow made a mistake. He's young. He will learn. MUFC. Dallow's been our player of the season. So, Mario Salina says Rashford is lying down on Eric Ten Hag. Laying, laying down on Eric Ten Hag. Cheers from Texas. Thank you, Mario. Tony says I'm worried about the back line for Sunday. I mean, aren't we all? Aren't we all worried about the back line for Sunday? Kumbwala might have to start. And you know what? He actually did quite well when he came on against Chelsea. A big game for him. And this is a situation Eric Ten Hag has been in all season. International 2675 says, same logic can be applied to the players that leave. It can, I'm afraid, because I've seen these players go through multiple managers. So I don't think it can, to be honest with you. That, that's just my opinion. I've seen what these players can produce. I've seen what the, these players do. I've seen it. I've seen them go and get Champions League for a new manager and then the next season, suddenly, we're fighting for sixth. We're playing really poorly. I've seen that happen multiple, multiple times. So for me, Eric Ten Hag is in a different boat to these players. Eric Ten Hag is doing everything he can to bring Manchester United back to the top. He might be failing right now, but he's doing everything he can. I don't know if you can say that for all them players. I really don't. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. So that's... That's that for me. The players and the manager in a different boat. There's players there that I think absolutely deserve a chance under Ineos and the new structure. Absolutely do. You know, Gan Acho worked his socks off this season at 19 years of age. Kobe Mainu, 
unreal talent, 18 years old. Rasmus Hoyland will run through brick walls, 21. So much potential, so much talent. Diogo Dallo, yeah, he's made some mistakes, but his heart's in the right place. He's got the right mentality. I know this is controversial, but Bruno Fernandes, let's just remember what he was like when he first came to the club and what he produced for us. And yeah, his form hasn't been good this season, but he would do the work and he has got the mentality. But there's a lot of players in that team that haven't got it up here and also haven't got it down there. They've not got the talent and they've also not got the mentality. And them players need to be shipped out. They do. And there needs to be... There needs to be a message sent from Ineos and Sir Dave Brailsford this summer that we can't just get another manager sacked. The players, we're gonna we're gonna have a little we're gonna take a look in the mirror here. And I'm sorry, this hasn't been good enough for a long time. We're gonna have to move you on. I don't I don't think it'll happen, but that, that should happen. That should happen for me. Um Last little bits coming in from this article about the, from The Athletic and Laurie Whitwell. He says, football director John Murto is set to leave Manchester United. Murto's exit should be confirmed once hires on structural side are formalised. We know that was coming, so Murto will be leaving Manchester United. I think, obviously, I never want people to lose the, lose the jobs, but this is a good thing. We need best in class, and fact of the matter is, Murto isn't that. He has been poor for Manchester United consistently. The one thing I will give to him is I do think he was instrumental in bringing Garnacho to the club. So for that, massive credit, credit where it's due. But ultimately, in terms of transfers, he, we've been laughed at all throughout Europe and John Murtagh's kind of been the head of that. Also, Jason Wilcox is expected to engage daily with the Manchester United manager and provide a link to the hierarchy. He will also be a bridge between the youth setup and the first team, tapping into work he did as academy director at Manchester City. This is great news. The reason why this is great news is because Foden, Cole Palmer, Rico Lewis, he's responsible for all of them players coming through at City and there's more that we can speak about. Look at what Cole Palmer's doing, look at what Phil Foden's doing. I mean, it's not solely based on him. Obviously, Pep Guardiola was a massive influence in the whole City Academy, but he was instrumental in all of them players' development. This is a good thing for Manchester United, especially considering the talent that we are actually bringing through at the moment. I mean, Kobe Mainu, revelation. Garnacho, what, a rev what an amazing talent he's been. You know, Kumbwala actually looks pretty decent coming through when we don't usually get defenders coming through, but I think he's got a chance under Eric Ten Hag. I really do. And then you've got, you know, the likes of Harry Armas, really promising left back coming through. Shay Lacey is another name that you can bring up. There's there's talent there in that youth setup. So to make sure we we get the best out of that, I think Jason Wilcox is is a great appointment to make. So I'm very happy about that. And this is the thing, several figures around Manchester United feel like Eric Dunn's Eric Ten Hag deserves the chance to operate in the new structural best-in-class format. And I think that says a lot because they're working with Ten Hag day in, day out. They see his attitude. They see what he's doing behind the scenes. They see the way he works and they want that. So for me, a lot of people I know and I understand why they want a change of manager. I am not saying this season is acceptable. I'm not. It's unacceptable. There's a lot of things with Ten Hag that make, that hold big question marks. For me, if Mount starts against Liverpool, he's going to be a big one because he should. If he doesn't start him, I'll be I'll be annoyed. And I'll think, what are you watching, genuinely? Because there's, there's certain things that he needs to change and he's not changed for a long time. But look at what the alternatives are going into the summer. Do you really want to start again from scratch? Do you want to start this process again? Or do we at least give him a chance? Because... No matter who comes in, nothing will be fixed overnight, I tell you that. And I think people just want a quick fix. But that's just not going to happen after years and years of running the club into the ground by bad ownership. We've got to start from scratch. We've got to start from the top, which is what Sergio Ratcliffe and Ineos are hopefully doing. And I really hope this report is right in the sense of they do want to back Ten Hag and stick with him and at least give him a chance. I really hope it is. James Cave says, Eric Ten Hag started transforming the style and it was always going to get worse before it gets better in that process. Courage is needed to see it through. Um, fresh ideas and design says United's loss if Eric Ten Hag leaves and another club's gain. Um, interesting super chats from you guys. Thank you for getting your super chats in. Please make sure you hit a like on the video as well. Last thing I wanted to say is that a lot of people say, you know, Eric Ten Hag does he even want to stay at Man United. The reports are apparently he really does. And 
he's said to be open in working in a more head coach based role and feels like following several talks with Sergeant Ratcliffe and Serve Brailsford, they have an alignment in terms of their vision. And that is hopefully best in class and, and winning. And I'm going to be honest, Eric Ten Hag shouldn't be in control of recruitment. We've, we've seen that through his recruitment. It's a drawback from him. But as if he's open to having more of that head coach base role, that suits Ineos down to the ground. Hopefully, there can be a collaborative effort. I'm not saying Ten Hag is going to be the guy that does go and win those Champions Leagues and Premier Leagues because I'm very underwhelmed right now. But what I am saying is he should at least be given a chance under the new structure. I think it would be a real mistake to not at least give him one season. United have been failing for over a decade now. We have been failing for over a decade. There is no rush to try and do another quick fix for it to fail again like it has the last six or seven times. Give the guy a chance. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. That's what I'd want to say. But thank you everyone for joining us. A, lot, a very long-winded show, but I just wanted to get I wanted to get my opinions across and kind of talk it out with you guys. Thank you for getting your opinions in the chat as well. Please make sure you hit a like on the video before you before you before you go. Mark will be back with the look ahead to the Liverpool game tonight. I'm sure it will be a cracker. I'll be watching live. I'll probably get in the chat as well. Make sure you get all your opinions heard because it's a time for opinions right now with Manchester United and there's a lot of different ones in the fan base. Thank you for watching, everyone. We'll see you at the weekend. I hope it's a better result than what we had against Chelsea. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not holding out too much hope, but let's hope we have something to celebrate come Sunday night. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. I will see you on the next one.